The attribute function in CSS has been around since the beginning, and it finally got an update that takes it from pretty much useless to one of my favorite new CSS properties. I've been waiting over 10 years for this to finally happen. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle. My job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And we're going to be talking about the ATTR function inside of CSS. This is a function that you can pass any attribute name at all. doesn't matter if it's a custom attribute or a normal attribute, and it's going to give you the value of that attribute inside of your CSS. Now, the problem with this attribute function is that it used to be incredibly limited in how you used it. You used to only be able to use it inside of before and after elements, so like this, and you used to only be able to use it as the content property inside those before and after elements. So it was incredibly limited. Oftentimes I would use it with like the title of something in like a tool tip. So obviously I couldn't do really fancy stuff with this, but the nice thing is now with the attribute function, you can use it for any property and any value you want. So for example, I can make my background color any background color I want. I can come up here and we can say background color and we can specify what we want this background color to be. And we can specify we want it to be the data color. And this is going to be a data attribute I define. So on my element, I can just come in here with a data color and I can set that to any color I want. Let's just come and set it to red. And you'll notice it actually doesn't look like it's working. And the reason for that is by default, this attribute function returns to us a CSS type of raw string. Essentially, CSS doesn't know what the type of this value is, so it just returns it as a string, and strings cannot be used in CSS. If I hover over this background color, you can see it must be a type of color, which is why the attribute function actually allows us to pass along a second property where we can call the type function, and we can pass it in the syntax for the type we want. In our case, we want the color type. So we just type in the exact syntax for that with the leaning bracket at the beginning and the end. And now if I give that a quick save, you notice it still doesn't quite work. And that's because I accidentally put a comma in here. You can't have a comma between the actual attribute name and the type of that attribute. Now, if I give it a save, you can see my color has changed to red. I can come in here and I can change this to any color I want. I could change it to green and now it updates to green. I can, for example, use some hexadecimal value in here. Now I'm going to get blue because that's hex for blue. And I can change it to literally any value I want. But what happens if I don't specify a value? Let's come in here and we'll just get rid of this data attribute entirely. Well, the nice thing is you can also specify a fallback, which just is going to have a comma. And then we put whatever our fallback value is. In our case, we'll put red. So now it's going to be red if we have no value. While if we come in here and we define a value, it's going to use this value instead of the fallback value. So this is a really great way for us dynamically to add in different things based on data attributes inside of our CSS and HTML. This allows us to more easily communicate between JavaScript and CSS, or even just communicate from HTML to CSS with no JavaScript at all. Another really nice thing about this is we're not limited to just, you know, colors and things like that. We can use this for literally any value we want. Let's come in here and we're going to specify a data width. I'm going to set that to a CSS value of, let's just say 500. There we go. And then I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to change my width. I'm going to use that attribute. I'm going to get my data width property. Again, I don't have to use it just with data attributes. I can use any attribute, but usually you're going to use data attributes. And instead of specifying a type, like I could specify a type of like number or length or something else. So instead, I'm going to come in here and actually specify a value of a unit. For my case, pixels. So this is going to be a 500 pixel wide box. And I can use any unit I want. For example, I could use rem. And now we have a 500 rem wide box. We'll change this to 50. So at least it's more reasonably sized. There you go. You can see it's 50 rem. I could even use percentage. And now we have a 50% size box. Maybe I want to use VW. So now I have 50 VW. We can go in here with VH. And again, you can use pretty much any unit that you want for this particular box. More often than not, you're going to use like pixels, rams, and so on, or you're going to use a specific type. Now, I did mention that the default type that you're going to get from this is a string, just a raw string. And you may think that'll work really well for certain things like animations where you want to specify a name. So we can come in here and we can say animation and we can give it a specific name. We'll just call this animation pulse. There we go. And we'll say that it's one second and it's going to repeat infinitely. There we go. And let's just define the keyframes for this real quick. And we'll just say from opacity 0.5 to opacity of one. So now we should get a little bit of a pulsing animation. All I need to do is name my keyframes. We'll name it pulse. And now you can see that I'm getting this pulse animation. It's not super beautiful. It doesn't have to be. So you may think if I come in here, I'll create a new property called data animation, and I'll set that to that name of pulse, just like that. And now I'm going to use that in here. So I'll say ATTR data animation and we know that comes back as a string so everything should be great right we'll give it a quick save and you'll notice my animation has completely disappeared the reason for that is because most of these properties that require you to pass in just a generic string value are actually a type of custom ident if we look at animation name here 
and we look at what the property type of this is, it just says animation name. And that's mostly because of my VS code not knowing what this is. But if I come up here, you can see that we have a keyframes name. And if we dive into the actual documentation for keyframes name, the behind the scenes type for that is custom ident. So oftentimes, anytime you're using a string that is going to be used with a specific CSS property, you're going to want to convert that to a type of custom ident, just like that. And now if we save, you'll notice our animation is now going to start working again because we specifically told CSS this is a custom identifier that points towards something else, whether it's a keyframe name or a view animation or literally anything else that requires a named property, even like grid areas, for example. Now, what makes these custom attributes incredibly powerful is when you use them with other things. For example, we can use if statements in CSS with the brand new if syntax. I'll link a video in the cards and description talking about it that makes these attribute functions even more powerful. So let me just come here and I'll create a custom variable and we'll just call this the color or we'll just call it var. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just our custom variable. We'll call it var, yeah, just like that. And we'll say ATTR data var and we'll come in here. We could just leave off the type or we could give it a specific type. We'll leave it off for now to see how this works. And we'll just get rid of a lot of this code inside of here. We'll get rid of the animation, there we go. And we'll come down here. And what I wanna do is I specifically wanna set the color of my box, so the background color using that if statement. So we can come over here that if syntax, just like this. And what I can say is if the style of var is equal to a specific value, we're just gonna say loading. Then what I wanna do is I wanna set my value to red. Now I can copy this down and let's just do for this one error. And we'll do green for loading and red for error because that's relatively self-explanatory. And then we can even come here with an else case, which is like a fallback value. In our case for the else case, we'll just set the value of blue. There we go. So now we have green, red, and blue. And you'll notice immediately when I save, my value changes to blue because that's my fallback and I don't have this data var set up. So let's come over here. We'll say data var and we're gonna set this to error and we should see it changes to red and we'll set it to loading and we should see it change to green. So this allows us to use this attribute in a lot of different ways for, for example, if checks inside of things. Now you will notice I have no type on this and that's just because it's using the custom raw string type, which is the default value. Oftentimes you may see people convert the type of this though to a custom ident when they're doing this type of conversion. And if I just put my parentheses in the proper location. And now when I convert to this, you'll notice it's not quite working. And that's because this custom ident type essentially expects you to pass in a string without quotes around it. So if we remove the quotes from loading and error and we save, you can now see this changes to green. And if we change this to error, we can see that it changes back to red. So depending or not if you're going to have something wrapped in quotes or not is really what determines whether you're using custom ident or not. And that's all there is to this function. Honestly, I think it's one of the coolest new additions to CSS and I've been wanting this for literally 10 years. There's so many different use cases I've had for this. Now, if you want to check out more about that if statement style query, I'll link a video right over here where I talk all about that. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.